Hello everyone, starting today, I'm starting a new series regarding ASP.NET Core Web API. In this first episode, we are going to talk about how a Web API endpoint gets invoked. I believe that's the most important technical part in understanding how Web API works. My name is Frank Liu. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please do so. And uh, please don't forget to hit the bell so that you won't miss the next episode of this series. All right, let's get started. First, let's start with some visuals so that we can make sure that we have a solid understanding of what Web API is. We have a user that uses a browser and that browser runs a web application in here and sends HTTP request to ASP.NET Core Web API. Any type of ASP.NET Core Web Applications process HTTP request through the middleware pipeline and then returns the HTTP response. That renders the HTML on the browser. For ASP.NET Core Web API, what the middleware need to do is to be able to map the request. For example, if the URL is HTTP, your domain name, slash API, slash product, then it needs to map that URL to, you'd have a controller class. So your product controller, right? And then you would have a method here. So the middlewares need to be able to map this request to one of the controller method, which we call the action method. The controller is a class. The action method is what actually processing is actually what it's used to process the HTTP request. After processing, usually a action method from the controller class will return a JSON. So whatever that is here will be serialized to JSON and the JSON will be returned through, through the pipeline back to the browser. Of course, an API doesn't have to be called by a browser. Next, let's jump into Visual Studio and take a look at how the middlewares map the requests to the controllers and controller action methods. Okay, so I have Visual Studio 2019 and I'm going to create a new project. And from here, I'm going to select ASP.NET Core Web Application. So, so it's this one. Okay, and then click on next and click on create and choose the empty one. I just want to show you how exactly it works. Right, and then click on create. So now we have the new web application created. And if we take a look at this program file, this is the entry point of any speed on a core web application. And it's a, it's a console application, right? And this creates the web server, right? So this creates the web server and then it starts to run it. So it runs in an infinite loop and listens to HTTP request. And like I said before, the HTTP request once comes in will be processed by a list of middleware that is called middleware pipeline. And in the configure method, you see in the startup file, this is called, this is instantiated from the program.cs. You start up providing the startup class name, and then it will be instantiated here. And the startup class has two methods, the configure services and the configure. The configure, method configures the middleware pipeline okay, so it means that the http request will go through these uh, middlewares so in this empty project you will see that it will it uses a rotting middleware and then it uses the endpoint so an endpoint is a piece of functionality and then it configures how this endpoint is recognized. So basically this recognizes the root URL. So any, if the root URL is passed in as the request, uh, then it will simply write hello world in the HTTP response. 
and that's how this simple middleware works. So the use rotting middleware, the rotting middleware will use this configuration to find which endpoint to rot to. And then the, this endpoint middleware will simply execute the functionality within the endpoint. So, and if we run it, we'll see that the web page will write hello world in it. And I'm not gonna demonstrate. But in order to write a web API, a web API will use the controllers class. And for that, we will need to create a, uh, let's create a folder and let's call it controllers. Okay. And then within that folder, we'll create a class. And that class is just not, it's not just any class. It has to, so let's, uh, we have to name it following a convention. It has to be, it has to be something, something controller. And also it has to derive from the controller base class and we'll have to so i press down control dot and i'm importing the namespace so there's the mvc uh, namespace and and then we can write our and then we can write our first uh, action method which will be executed by the endpoint middleware okay and in order to rot the HTTP request to the action method, we need to provide a attribute rotting configuration. So we'll say rot, and then we'll say, let's say um, it's product. Okay. And instead of returning the actual product in JSON, I'm just returning a string for now. So I'm just say, gonna say you know, lots of products, just for demonstration purpose. So with this rot config configured, uh, if the client is asking for the domain name slash products, it will be rotted to this uh, function and this function will be executed. So, uh, but we have to go back to the startup class to configure the middleware pipeline to be able to rot HTTP requests to our controller methods. And for that, we're, we're getting rid of this. And instead, we're saying endpoints map controllers. What this will do is to configure the way how we map the HTTP request to the controllers. So in our case, we're using attribute routing. So this uh, kind of configures the attribute routing. And then this routing middleware will be able to use the attribute routing to map the HTTP request to our controller method. And this controllers, this endpoint middleware, right? this endpoint middleware is actually dependent on a lot of classes. Those dependencies has to be configured in the configure services. And as we can do a services dot at controllers. So this at controllers is if you hover mouse over it, you will see that it's actually a extension method, right? So the first part, it says extension. Uh, it's extension method that is comes, also comes from MVC. So this provided the dependencies for the map controllers uh, endpoint, the middleware to, to use. So once we have all, we have the routing middleware and uh, the controllers middleware, as well as dependency provided. And we also, so far we also made sure that we have a controller uh, class and we derive that class from the, con the base controller and then we configured our routing. And now we can try to execute it, to run it. So it says 404, once it's run, that's because the root URL doesn't correspond to any endpoint, right? But what we can do is we can do slash uh, products. Okay. This will map to our, uh, this is already already mapped to our controller method, the action method. Next, let's talk about attribute routing. So in here, uh, we can just, for each action method, we can use attribute routing 
separately, right? So for example, if I create another one that says, you know, got by ID, then I can do this and then I provide that, that ID. So this is a, uh, a raw parameter. And then I can, I can declare this parameter inside my function, this, and then I can use this ID in whatever way I want. So currently, right now, I'm just going to return it okay, like this. So we try it again with products, we'll see lots of products, right? Uh, and if I put products slash 10, it will be mapped map to the second action method. The problem with this kind of ROS configuration is that we are repeating this products over and over and over again. So there are different way to do it, which is you can actually configure a rod attribute uh, for the class, right? And, and for that, you can just put the rod above the class and then you say, uh, usually we put API at the front and then you can use a, uh, a token. Right, so this controller token basically maps to this name you know, before the word controller. Right? So in this case, we don't need to have those products here. And another problem is that we're missing the HTTP verbs. So for this get, I can say it's get, right? I can give it, give its name. And then uh, for this one, I can also say this should be get. And the inside get, I can actually inside the HTTP get attribute, you can actually configure the, the raw template. So in this case, we have already have the API slash product. And here I just need the ID. So I just put the ID here and it will also be mapped over here. Let's run it and see. So this uh, slash products stops working because we changed it to API slash products. Right, so this will be mapped to the first one, the first action method. And then if I put the 100, it will be mapped to the second one. So that's all for today that we have learned. Let's review what we have learned, right? We have learned that in ASP.NET Core Web API, the program.cs is the entry point of the application. And then it runs in an infinite loop, listens to the HTTP request. And the request is, is processed by a list of middleware. So we're using the routing middleware as well as the, uh, the endpoints middleware, specifically the map controllers one, to route our uh, HTTP request to our controller. Another thing we need to do is to add the dependencies in the configured services. And the add controllers is the extension method that includes all of the dependencies. Last but not least, we, we need to create a product controller. I mean, a controller that derived from a base controller. And then we need to configure the attribute routing. That's everything for today. This is the first episode of a new series. If you like my tutorials, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you will not miss my new tutorials. Thank you for watching.